Hi everybody, welcome to episode 5 of In the Moment with myself, my dog Honey Pie, and Glenn Zaleski. And uh, we're going to go over <laughs> um, a few of the songs that we're going to play, we're going to talk about those. And a little bit of housekeeping first. Again, thank you all for your marvelous donations. We really appreciate it. Uh, as I've said before, this is what we've got for the time being instead of being able to play clubs, concerts, you name it. So anything helps. Uh, anything and everything helps. Um, you know, if you go to Starbucks, that's a $5 cup of coffee. If you like our music, I would hope that we'd be at least worth that and maybe more. So thank you all uh, for your donations. We do appreciate it, believe me. And I try to write back to everybody that uh, contributes. Also, so keep sending in requests of things you'd like to hear us play, including uh, actual sending of sheet music, which some people have been doing. Uh, Maureen has been great about that, too. Um, and uh, finally, my apologies on behalf of my partner in crime, Glenn Zaleski, who's been editing these videos and apparently putting them in uh, one channel only for the last two episodes or so. And uh, we're going to correct those and then put up all the, um, the two channel versions uh, uh, as soon as possible. So sorry about that. And thanks to Seth for uh, pointing that out. Okay, now on to today's program. We start with the Duke Ellington song from 1938, which was uh, one of his, in my opinion, my humble opinion, one of his two great bands. Um, that, uh, and that was, it's a great uh, jumping song called Old King Doogee. And uh, that's that. Uh, number two is uh, a beautiful tune called How Beautiful Is Night by Robert Farnan, who was Canadian-born, lived uh, in England most of his life. Um, he was an arranger, a conductor, a composer, uh, and he wrote, he arranged uh, some memorable albums for, amongst others, Joe Williams, Tony Bennett, and of course, one of my favorite records, Frank Sinatra sings great songs from Great Britain. And uh, How Beautiful This Night was uh, one of George Shearing's favorite songs. And other than George, not widely played or recorded. Um, so I think it's, a, it's due for a revival. It's such a gorgeous song. That's followed by Julie Stein and Betty Comden and Adolph Green's Make Someone Happy from the 1960 show Do Re Mi, starring the late, great Phil Silvers, who was one of our all-time great comic actors. If you don't know about Phil Silvers or have forgotten, just check out any Sergeant Bilko episode and you're going to see some wonderful comic timing. Um, and uh, make someone happy. There's one of my favorite versions is Believe It or Not by Jimmy Durante, who um, had a couple albums, one of them arranged by the great Gordon Jenkins of... Uh, uh, very poignant versions of ballads, and that's that's one of them. Uh, this was a show-stopping number, and um, Julie Stein at that point was so prolific, he was writing two shows a year during those that time, and uh, Comden and Green uh, had a routine where they worked together every afternoon for 60 years, and when asked if they were married, Betty Comden responded, we never thought we were. That's the important part. Somebody should have told me that, honey pie. Would have saved me some money. Anyway, um, that's followed by Once Upon a Summertime, beautiful song by Michelle Legrand, uh, words by Eddie Marnay, and the English words adapted by Johnny Mercer. We'll talk about Johnny Mercer on an upcoming show. Uh, he was... Um, uh, Jack of all trades and master of all trades. Uh, he he was a great composer, lyricist, and singer too. All around entertainer. Um, 
And Michelle Legrand, of course, uh, composer, arranger, you know, everything. Uh, memorable songs and did some great jazz albums too. One, one featured Miles Davis and Ben Webster. And he also recorded uh, in later years with Phil Woods and Zoot Sims. So this is a haunting melody by Michelle Legrand, Once Upon a Summertime. Followed by number five, uh, a song by Southampton-born Billy Reed, a British composer. Uh, he was an accordionist also, a band leader, and it's a song called A Tree in the Meadow. The reason I know he was Southampton-born was because I played many, many times in Southampton. There's a great jazz club there. I hope it's still there, called the Concord Club, and uh, worked there many years. Wonderful place. And... Uh, People still talked about him, actually, from the town. They were proud of him as well. They should have been. He was a um, he was the first British songwriter to top the U.S. charts, um, which was the uh, Ink Spots version of the Gypsy. Uh, that was his song. Louis Armstrong recorded that too, uh, very memorably, as did Sonny Stitt. He uh, he also wrote, wrote "I'll Close My Eyes," and "A Tree in the Meadow" was um, uh, written. Uh, not written for, but it was a big hit for Margaret Whiting. Uh, sadly, Billy Reed went from being a millionaire to being penniless at the time he died in uh, 1974. And if we don't get more donations, I may be in the same... No, anyway, we'll, we won't talk about that now. Uh, moving on to number six. It's a song... This is a little weird thing. I, as I've mentioned to you all, this show is about me digging through the vaults, finding songs that I've never recorded, never played, or haven't played in years. and So I have a storage room full of stuff, you know, and I go down there and dig out music. I had a lead sheet of a thing called Passing Thoughts by Aaron Bell, who was the uh, on and off again bassist with Duke Ellington for some memorable years, and also a wonderful pianist. That's all I know. Uh, I don't know where I got this from or what the circumstances were, but it's a it's an interesting take on the blues by Aaron Bell called Passing Thoughts. If anybody knows any more out there, let me know. Then number seven is Irving Berlin's I Used to Be Colorblind, uh, which in a way, a strange way, is a good song for these times. Um, because if you if you listen to the lyrics, um, it's a slightly different meaning of colorblind in that um, you know, he met somebody and this the person in the song met someone and, and now they see all the colors for the first time and it's made their life uh, that much richer. So uh, there you go. Irving Berlin, fascinating person, uh, was a one-fingered pianist. That didn't mean he just had one finger. That meant he chose to only use one finger. He, he was self-taught and just kind of pecked away at the, uh, at the piano keyboard. Um, and uh, always had musical assistants, secretaries, orchestrators, whatever you want to call them. But they did a lot of the work of actually um, fleshing out the songs, orchestrating the songs, putting chord changes to them, making uh, these crazy bridges that he could write uh, fit, you know, fit into the jigsaw puzzle that was the entire song. Um, but he had an innate sense of melody, Irving Berlin, no question about that. Um, he played only in the black keys in the key of F sharp. And he had a rare item. He had a transposing piano that was never a common thing. Uh, it was, you know, he had two made for him. One of them is at the Smithsonian. And uh, that's Irving Berlin. Uh, lived very long life, too. Um, our last song for this program is uh, called The Sweetest Sounds, written by Richard Rogers, one of my favorite composers, from the 1962 musical No Strings. And unusually so, uh, music and words by Richard Rogers. As you all know, he wrote mostly with um, either Lorenz Hart or Oscar Hammerstein. Uh, but this show, he wrote the lyrics too, and they're beautiful lyrics. Um, starting with the first line of this song, the sweetest sounds I'll ever hear are still inside my head. So um, that concludes today's program. I hope you enjoy it. 
and we thank you all for your continual support and we've gotten so many nice comments about this series and we'll keep going as long as you want us to so uh, thanks and uh, donation information is all written down um, along with this uh, post so take care everybody and uh, see you down the road